do. So they didn't change anything with their inflation rate is still 0.2.5. Retail sales around uh, midnight, 1 a.m. for me. Germany in the middle of the night, business climate. Bank of England's quarterly bulletin just before the New York Open. Reserve Bank of Australia has a governor speaking at 11.30 GMT. And then that Michigan Consumer Sentiment will be after the New York Open. So uh, be paying attention there. All right, before we run over to Alvio, uh, those of you, this is the my trading room, you know, that's on the April calendar. I also do uh, the Swing Trader Venture Crew uh, over on Trader on the Street. Um, the old standard disclaimer, everything we do is for education and training purposes. Uh, reviewing the trading plan for trading in a $10,000 account or any account that you have. Maximum daily risk of 5% as is set by the trading platform, the risk folk. Maximum per position risk, we are doing a quarter of 1%, which allows us to look at 20 pairs. Uh, maximum open pending orders of 20. We don't want to be overexposed. Reward potential, uh, at least one for one, uh, but we want two to one or better uh, so that we can not worry so much about our accuracy, uh, especially in the markets where we don't always find the uh, chart setups and patterns. But this is uh, something I added today while I spend some time thinking. Uh, some of you may be new, some of you may be old hat here. Uh, but we've been reading charts, placing and reviewing trades for some time, probably a couple of years. Uh, now would be a good time to sharpen our trading focus for those of you that are already familiar with what I do. Uh, to do so, we need the rate to trade setups. You know, I've been talking about, well, that's not my five star trade. Uh, that's I'll play around with it. I might take it, but it's not it doesn't have all my attention. So I wanted to kind of start us looking at, instead of trading, trading everything we see, moving over to trading something that may provide us with an outcome that we want. So I've kind of broken it up and this is gonna be modified as we work our way through it. Uh, what are we looking for? I call them five-star setups. I don't know of anything other way to call them. And then three-star and one-star. And there's going to be something in between. But uh, if I'm really looking for a trade that I'm really going to uh, turn off my radio and close my door and pay attention, it's going to be a five-star setup. Uh, the others are going to be setups, but they're going to be smaller setups. So I kind of have a trading challenge. Uh, you don't have to participate, but it's something that those folks that have the time uh, keep in mind you're trading yourself to let the trade come to you, not the profit, but uh, the trade come to you. Be patient, look for the best setup, the best entry relative to risk and the reward you're looking for. Once you're comfortable with this approach, you can take advantage of the markets. Uh, there will not be uh, five star trades every day, uh, but there may be a couple three star trades for smaller types of profits and setups. We get into the frame of mind with, uh, and it so much is everything right here, right now with scalping and, and trading on the one minute and the five minute, which is all well and good. Uh, it might not fit with everybody's personality or uh, life schedule, work schedule. So kind of a trading challenge. We wanna be in a large enough account that we can actually spend some time trying to earn something. I use a $10,000 account, demo account, Find only those trade setups where you can uh, earn at least 1% or greater. Uh, we're looking at can we actually learn, earn 1% of an account. Uh, one position per trade. We're not going to wobble in or wobble out or leg in or leg out. A limit of five maximum open pending trades at any one time because we're going to be using our if we're trying to get 1%, we're going to be risking pretty close to 1% at times. 
a reward potential one to one, but we're going to try to get for every dollar at risk, we're going to try to get two or three. We're really going to reach out there. With this approach, the, the question becomes, can you make a half to 1% a day? And if a person can make a half a percent, some days you'll make 1% or 2%, other days you'll, you'll be a little bit slower, but you can stand to uh, double your money in a year or at least uh, make it over again. Uh, the follow-up question, what size account is needed to make trading worth your time? Once you establish that you can make, um, one and a half to one percent a day trading longer term setups then it's up to you to say okay well i'd like to be in a fifty thousand dollar account or a hundred thousand dollar account or whatever you want to be in to make it worth your time financially so we get hung up so much on the on the dollars where we just need to recognize if we can do percentages then we can just move the decimal by working ourselves into larger accounts and then the rest of the slide is just everything that we did before, you know, to teach new traders how to read charts, to identify entry points and determine price targets so they can trade with confidence on their own. It takes time, but you can do it with good study habits. So now I'm going to go over to Alvio. So keep in mind, let me go back to here. We're looking for setups where we can get, try to make 1% or a half a percent or greater. We're only looking for those things that have payouts for us. All right, let's go over to Albion. We'll start. And how many of folks here are really selective at your setups? That you feel comfortable with the type of setup that you want and you're trading your setups. You might have three or four that you like. So the first step is to identify, you know, a five-star trade. What is it that's going to make me pay attention and, and not uh, be goofing around? Is there a five-star setup here on the Euro US and the daily chart? There's nothing there that will pay me other than scalping for my time. So I can quickly just pass this pair all together. I'm still going to go through the same pairs as I do, the first 10 majors. Then I'll go through all the others. So some of you, okay, some of you are saying that you have your setups that you like. Let me take this one back up to a daily. Now, I'm not going to forego or stop trading trades, you know, showing people how to read charts and looks at setups. Um, I'm not going to do that, but I am going to look at trying to focus in when we see something worth our attention. So the US yen on a daily chart, I'm going to take it to a weekly because we are starting the Thursday to Friday calendar candle. So looking at the US yen on a weekly calendar chart, this may be the start of a reversal candle. We don't know, but it is an apex candle at the moment. We have to wait till Friday's close and then reevaluate it. This could be a five star trade. Let me refresh this. I use TradingView mostly to reach out there and find the bigger trades because I'll need more historical data. So we're way, way out there. So this doesn't have to reverse too much to make it worth our time. So if it reverses, 
the first bounce will be here. It doesn't look like a big trade. There's the second one. But let's just see. From there down to there is 200, almost 300 pips. If it's going to come back and test this one, if this becomes a reversal. So that is certainly worth my trade. So we got to wait for it. If I'm trying to get over 200 pips on it, I can only do 100 here in my calculating. And I'm going to run this all the way down to a micro. So 1% 1 of 11,633 is what, $116? if I remember my decimals. We can start at 5%, half a percent, I'm sorry. Now I'm gonna increase my position size. Now let's see, my risk is gonna be around, I'm gonna to have to wait for that to do uh, digest a little bit, so, but. Let's look at the uh, target size. At a micro, I'm only making $7. So at a 0.16, I would be looking at $119. I could drop it off to 0.15 and be looking at $111. Now that's just on 100 pips. So this is going to be, if it went 300 pips, it would be $333. So I can divide this, move this down to where I'm getting a third. Let's move it down to 40. We'll do 50. So if it get 300, I would be making 150 pips, and then that's greater than 116. So that would be my 1%. So I'm going to wait for it, and then I'm going to go look at it later. So this would be on my scratch paper. Pound US on a four-hour chart. Am I even then this? Okay, so it has a sell. It's been meandering. This should, trade should come off because it's just not doing anything. Let me go up to the weekly. I have a double bottom hidden in here. That's what I was trading for, but it's just awfully quiet. If this breaks and moves over to the low, back in here, April 30th of 20, 2019, I think. How far may this trade move to this low? About 147, we'll call it 150 pips. So at a mini, I'm gonna run this up. So I'm gonna keep this at 100. If I get to 150 pips, we'll check it again. That'll be greater than my 116 trading a mini. So this has the potential of being a five-star trade. But we're at the moment, we're still going sideways. Everybody kind of following along. Am I, am I making myself somewhat clear? Now, my position here, pound US was only a 0 0.02 for demonstrations. So this would need to be redone and made worth my time. So I have two that may be setting up out of my trades. So I'm gonna continue going through them. US Swiss on a daily, let's go to the weekly and see how this is all set up. This has just been a really, really tiny quiet area. 
this up here is my, these are my five star trades. This up here pays for a lot. Uh, these reversals came back down for almost 500 pips. Even if you're conservative and took off half of it, they're excellent trades. But back down here, I have a pending buy, but it's not, it has to turn before it'll become anything. So that's a, a maybe, maybe that's a three star. Yeah, a good double top there. Aussie US, I have a penny buy down here to see if it's gonna reverse and go up. So this one, I have pressure underneath it. So I'm not clear down to this level. I'm just at this level. So this would be, I will call it a three star. And we might change our words for star or between five and three as we go work our way through the logic of it. But here will be a trade. What I'm looking to get out of it is about 187. So I would put a mini in that one to look at 187. my risk is going to be $74. So I'm risking 74, which is well below my 116. So this is going to be a three star. Take the US cat all the way up to the weekly. That head and shoulders, uh, are you here, Sam? Uh, trying to climb up that trend line. Had a nice, one nice trade, and then it just started to climb the trend line. Up here is a nice reversal area, 1.30679. Down at the bottom, we're in between. We would rather be down here. Down here will be a five star trade for me because of the large institutions that are forcing the other direction. Currently, we're just sitting up there. If it gets up to there and turns back down, what's the potential? Another 265. You got stopped out earlier. So I could put a mini in that, and if it even gives me half of it, it's a very, very good trade over my uh, my one percent of one hundred sixteen dollars. And then if I was trading in a hundred thousand dollar account, I'm looking at making a thousand dollars a trade or whatever. So let's go study the top of this. So inside this mess is a head and shoulders. There's an, was another one over here. I'm gonna be patient and see if this can work its, the rest of the way back up and give me a really nice failure. So I would be looking for a swing top up here. So it's gonna be a five-star trade, but it's a five-star trade. Check it every so often. I got time to wait on that. New Zealand, US. How was everybody's week so far trading?
Let's go up to the weekly. Good, good. New Zealand, US, I'm down here at the extremes. Up here would be my five star trades. Now it takes for a while for prices to get to these levels, but they get there. Down 353 this week, Brian. What type of uh, trading are you doing? Scalping or uh, swing trading or there's a level here before COVID. I would have to go over to trading view, but I'm going to put a line here. I'm looking for where banks, mutual funds, hedge funds are buying or selling, swing and long term. So reversal off here went up as high as 140. So the trade has come and gone. Now we'll look to see if it's going to test it again. And I'm looking to see if it's going to break through it. So a pending buy along this level, which was reflected here and way over before COVID, where would it have made $116 right in here? So I did better than that. And these wicks over here at 167, that's where it stopped. So we look for our targets based on what we want to get out of it. That can it make 100 for this account? 116 pips at it shooting a mini using a mini just going to generally ballpark it that way and then put the target out over there in the measure and count again when it comes down to here i know that 116 is up here if it comes out the bottom then i want to be able to go to a larger time frame and see where i can make 116 or greater so i'm waiting on this one is the trades come and gone Now, long-term swing trading, it doesn't take anything to really be down 353 pips. Euro pound. Euro pound has some uneven wicks at the top so that it's not a rated trade at all. And I'm back in the middle of these wicks here. So there's nothing I want to do with that one. So I can pretty quickly go through 27 pairs and go, is there a trade for me? I have a pending sell up here at a weekly high. I'll take that off so we're not looking at it. And then we'll put it back on later. This was also a weekly high. It reversed here. One percent was right there, no movement at all. With what it did back to this level over here, this reversal crown 
at 411 pips. So that would have been a $400 trade. That's what we're trying to get. Up here, it repeated 90 there, and then it came on down to 167. Now we're waiting for a reset. So we leave and we go looking somewhere else. Euro Swiss, let's go up to the weekly. We have a, a deep section here on the Euro Swiss. It went below its weekly low and then turn right around. So that is a, a historical low. If we get back down to there, it will be a buy for me. Up here will be a sell. If there is some sort of reversal pattern, I'll have to take it manually because of this pressure here. I just won't throw a penny buy here, but it can move clear back to here. Buy back here, to there's 91, there's 128, so there's there. All the way back up, if it's doing that, it's 400 and some pips again. If it comes out the bottom, we're going to have to go check uh, trading view to find out where it may go. So down here, this will be a five-star trade. Here, a three-star trade. And let's go down to the daily and the four-hour and see, is there a reversal candle? Poor formation. Internet went down. Uh, we've had some unusual thunder and lightning go through here in Utah. It's usually pretty quiet as far as storms go. So we'll hopefully make it okay. I do not have a reversal here yet. I, I, if you did a pending or took it on the daily, you did get 102. I need to see a reversal before I take this trade. It looks like it wants to head down to here. So I will wait to here. So it'll be a five-star trade down there. Then I'm gonna go right to the top of the alphabet here. I'm not gonna worry about these other trades. I'm gonna spend more time talking about in the first year, where are going to be the best setups? High reward, low risk. Obviously, Cat, I have a pending buy down here. It didn't catch it. Up here, I'll do a pending sell, but it's just quiet at the moment. Obviously, Swiss. You can take the same approach and search four hour charts. Your reward's gonna be less, but that's fine. Pending sales up here on the Aussie Swiss. The bottom has been uneven, so I don't have any orders to buy here because it's not an even structure. So I'll wait to see how this develops. It does look like these two lows here were pretty close. A move back up there to here is just right at 200. So this could be a good trade. This is COVID, so I discount it. I would have to look to, look to the far left of COVID to see the, the real lows. So down here, this would be a five-star trade. If I get a reversal pattern and it can come up 300 pips here, that's a three-star trade. So hopefully as I work through these, I'll get my buzzwords down and we can better identify trade setups uh, that are worth your time. And then you can take uh, smaller types of setups with an anticipation or an expectation that it's gonna be a smaller trade. Sales along here, 
nothing that I want to do right here. It's tried to pivot this week, but nothing's happened. So I can go leave that one right away. Aussie US, we've done CAD Swiss. You don't want to be a one hit wonder, you know, where you put all your money into one trade. But there's nothing wrong with specializing in the types of setups in trading with the bigger traders. Now the CAD Swiss, um, let's see, it was a, a market order. It closed below these wicks here. So since it's in between, this wouldn't be a five-star trade. It has potential. So let's see what it can go down to there. So I'm looking at, if I'm trading a many, $212. If I can get down to there. Uh, my 116 at 1% is right about there. So plenty of room to make a profit and be gone if you want to leave. The bottom is uneven. It put in a double, a double bottom and then reverse. So I would want to be out before here and then I'll measure this once we get to it. If it does, CAD in. So a sell stop, again, I'm limited up here. There's an order in my blue line. It didn't catch this one up here, but this would have been a five-star trade if it actually caught it. And that moved down 400 pips, you know, in 10 days. So here, we're just getting started. Back down to there, it can be 253. So I'm in a version of a five-star trade. Back down to here where I have a pending buy with these wicks, that's be a three star trade because it could dip down into here. But back up, there's 268 there. Swiss yen, I'm gonna have to go to the trade view to look at this because I don't know if these are tied to the others. I believe this, is it the Swiss yen or is it another pair that's making new highs? I look at so many charts, I can't keep them all straight at times, but once we get the reversal, if it comes, I'm gonna look back to previous support, which is the top of this reversal pattern here. And is there potential? Down to there's 267. So very comfortable. Swiss yen. Okay. So I here have to wait for a reversal pattern, or I can buy back down here. So we're gonna look at the big ones first. Now let's go down and look at this on the daily. It's starting to reversal. Uh, we had an engulfing uh, bearish candle. It covered the apex candle here, this tiny one, but it didn't cover this one. So I don't have a sell yet. Euro Aussie. So those of you that are my venture crew, 
uh, we will meet Saturday morning at eight at the normal time. And then Monday when I'm on the calendar, I won't be on the calendar uh, or Tuesday. Uh, my wife is having surgery, so I, I better uh, help her out. The Euro Aussie sells in these wicks if it reverses about 90 pips into this area. So it's, it's a, a nice trade, but the size of the move is kind of truncated. So it's a good setup, but it isn't giving me what I want. Yep. Uh, you, over the years, you go through a lot of things together. Total knee time for. Euro Canadian. I have a pending cell in my circles. If I catch it, the risk on this one's about 70 if it gets into new highs. Uh, potential, where do I get 116? 125 is there before this support, that's 128. Down to here is 268. If we can find some two to one setups, really helps us with our, uh, our return and then we our accuracy. Now we can really focus on some nice trades. Then you can go down and find the three or the two, one star setups for smaller trades. If you're uh, trying to stay busy or just trade. Euro Swiss we've done, Euro Pound, Euro Yen, let's look at Euro New Zealand. Okay, this is a for me a nice rated trade. It did continue through about 53 pips, but on the downside, back into the lines here, there's 122 to here, 146, not even getting down to the bottom, but looking at where it came from. So that would be a five star trade. Come and gone, so I need to look for another setup. Let's refresh this one. Just to this area here in these wicks is 177, potentials 435. So this is a five star trade. Uh, down here, it's uneven. So I would have to look at a bounce uh, to get a better trade up. But I like these tighter areas because there's some really organized selling going on by institutions. Uh, I right clicked on the chart and went to refresh down here. Whenever I see a broken chart, just a data error,
pound Canadian, there's nothing I can do there. Up here, I can be patient. And if I get a reversal, again, above it, there's room. But if I see a reversal like this three bar reversal here, even to the double bottom, there's 250. So there's a lot of potential long-term trading if we're patient and selective. Back up here, if I get another reversal down to here, it could be 233. A bounce off the bottom here, back up to that level is 279. At the moment, I have to just skip over it. Way down here is a weekly low on the pound Swiss. I have a pending buy here. This is a historical low. On the other side of COVID, what I'm looking at, I move back up, and I not I don't want to miss it, so I have it a little bit higher here. Move back up is about 144, so again, it meets my minimum of 116. My risk just has to be half of it at, at least, uh, so there's 47 in risk. Pound yen. In the past year, uh, once this reversal was put in motion, there are a couple small ones here. They didn't go as deep, but they were pending orders along those level. When it broke out of here, it moved up nicely. Here's the head and shoulders that was in here. Any cells in here, I am I in this one pound yen. Still a pending cell. It just missed it, which would be the spread. So where my top of the candle is, back down to there was 249 and I just missed it. So perfectly fine, but that's the type of a, a five-star trade. I don't know what these got. Once this point was set, that picked 384. It looks like a tiny trade. Uh, this one picked up 384 and then down to there 500. Your opinion still didn't trigger on the pound Swiss. Pound New Zealand, uh, we're in between two outside edges. Up here is where I'd rather be or down here. There are trades through here wicking up and coming down. So that would be a one star trade. Are you short? Okay, but it has to pay. Down into here is 180, so it'll at least meet my minimum of 116 pips. Now we can go through all these and drop it down to a four hour chart and do the exact same thing. We just have to be aware of where the daily and weekly uh, support and resistance is. New Zealand, Canadian, a big range here. We're right in the middle. Down here, I can do something. 
up here, I can do something, but not now. So I can move right on. New Zealand Swiss was a sell stop below that pivot. It's not a five star because I have some wicks here, but let's see what the potential is. Potential is right at 111, so it's just barely one to one. So it's a nice trade. It just isn't going to get me what I want out of it, but I'll take it. I have my New Zealand yen up here in the weekly high, a pending sell. Some of these that didn't quite make it up there and it didn't catch my trade. Um, that one pulled back 306. Uh, this one got a little bit closer and pulled back 135. So we'll just have to see, but the potential for this trade to there was 221. And that takes care of everything here. So going through there, I think we saw some setups. Any thoughts? Can we trade in the neighborhood of a mini? Can we look for a trades that make us 116 pips? Or, or greater? Can we control our size of loss to half of that and just be very, very selective? No takers, nobody, nobody's buying it. So we get so hung up on uh, the right here and the now and everything. There's some just great opportunities for being patient. So at my, I'm just trying to think here, 35 years of trading, I learned that uh, I like to follow the big money. I'm not worrying about them stop hunting or doing any of those things. I'm just trading where the large institutions are, the hedge funds and such. Pays for my time. I don't have to be in front of my computer all the time. If you're trying to increase your activity, then you're looking at smaller setups. Seldom on a four hour chart are we going to find a weekly higher low. Hey, Eric, I don't know uh, what it costs to get into a crew. Um, were you on the uh, trading partner program before or anything? And I'm, okay. I can't, I would starve to death in cells. I could never close a deal or even ask for money. Uh, and they could spend weeks on me going, all you gotta have to say is that, is that Visa, uh, cash or Bitcoin? 350,000 street credits to get into a crew. Okay. Are you involved, Eric, on the trader on the street? Okay. So you work around to finding ways to get uh, street creds and things. Uh, my trading room, which is I start Monday night and then I do uh, Wednesday, 
morning, Wednesday evening, and Thursday. So there's already four hours. Uh, so that would be good. So what I can do for those people that are in the cruise, if we set up the challenge and then for every 116 pip trade or $106, $16 trade, I can take that and I can multiply it by 10 or whatever is reasonable and give street credit. Uh, so that uh, I can help people uh, build up their street cred to get into other crews, buy into rallies or whatever it is. Now on a four hour chart, again, I have to be aware of where the outside edges are the, on the daily and the weekly. If prices get down to here, now we had a flat top over here. So it couldn't get higher than it finally did. So this level is really important. So if we get down to here, can we get a turn in the trade? Back up to there's 120. So you may get into some extra trades a little bit sooner. You still want to be very tight on your stop. Let's work our way back up. So I would put two charts side by side. I would put the weekly and the daily, whatever you want to look at, as your guidance chart so you can see where the big traders are sitting. And then trade the in-between trades, what other traders are doing, if you want to increase your activity. If, if longer term on a daily and a weekly isn't enough activity. This here on a four hour chart. I can teach you how to lose money. It only takes about 20 minutes. And then once you get that out of your system, you're done. You'll never want to do it again. And I'm sure there's plenty of folks here that have already done that. So there's only 40 pips here. So it's not going to make my 1%, but it can contribute to maybe three trades that can make up 1% for the day. On the four hour here, there was which way was this thing going to swing? At the moment, if it gets back up to here, it may reverse because what was resistance is now support and now resistance. If it sits up here and gives me a reverse back down, there's about 40 pips. So if I'm looking at 40 pips, I have to say I'm only going to lose 20. And can I make $40 on the trade? And can I do four of those a day or three of those a day? and find them. Don't trade a strategy, trade where the market's getting ready to turn. So, you know, I haven't thrown out the word four star yet, Sam, because I just don't know how to qualify it. But yeah, I, that would be reasonable. We just got to make sure we're making two dollars for every dollar at risk now up here is going to be my be the bigger trade if it gets to here i'm certainly going to get interested even on a four hour chart but what i would do is put my chart out here where I can see the outside levels and see if I'm trading in just a smaller price and time cycle. But if it breaks out of the price and time cycle, I got a skedaddle. That's what happens when you're scalping is when it uh, leaves its price and time cycle. So this is the same thing I do when I'm scalping. I look at the big traders and then I uh, run down and I try to find some new turns in direction. 
then I like to trade them. I like to, to trade after a test. Let somebody else go through the test of the trade, and then I'll take it. So here, New Zealand Canadian, it's a very similar pattern. I'm in between two pivots way up there, down here. So this wouldn't be a trade for me to look at. Let's just go to the Aussie CAD and switch them here. Of course, they would look there both on the same time frame. They would look the same. Uh, this is going to be daily. This needs to be okay. Take this down to the four hour. I need to get down to here before I buy on the Aussie CAD. So isn't necessarily going to be anything that I can do here. Now there's 40 pips if it swings here and goes back down to here. So my I would look at the current price back down to there is 40 pips. I'm not going to give more than 17 or 20. But again, that's hard to rate. I know there's a class coming right up here, so I'll skedaddle. If there's any thoughts or suggestions that you have, just shoot an email off to me at rex at uh, traderonthestreet.com or rex at uh, aprefund.com. And just kind of change your thinking a little bit if you haven't already. All right, everyone, have a good rest of your evening or day, depending on where you are in the world. Appreciate your company. All righty. Bye-bye. I will be there. <laughs>